Hello again, and welcome back to another episode of Walk Through the Word. As I'm out here again, just enjoying the beauty of God's creation, looking at this winter day, if you believe it or not, it reminds me of something that I was taught back when I was in school, trained to be a pastor. The teacher then said to us as a class, don't doubt in the dark what God told you in the light. It's a whole point of that there are going to be times when we go forward when the Word of God seems stressed or strained or we feel like we just can't reach it. Those are the times when we have to hold on by faith to what God has promised us. So come on, let's walk through the Word and we'll talk a little bit more about holding on to the promises of God. Let's walk through the Word. You know what's amazing is this. See, very often when the Word of God comes to us, we're so excited about it because we can see the hope and the promise that's attached to it. But usually when the Word of God comes, we're, we're in a tough spot. We're in that dark place and, and then there's deliverance. Think back to the children of Israel in the, the book of Exodus. In the third chapter, God is talking to Moses, the calling of Moses on the mount, the fiery bush. And he tells Moses then that he's going to send Moses back to Egypt to get the children of Israel out of Egypt and take them into the promised land. Now, if you're the children of Israel at that time, you're in slavery. You're being whipped. You're being treated badly. You're working for a master who hates you. And so anything sounds good. And so here you are. Moses comes. The, the plagues of Egypt are, are on display. And now you leave Egypt. You're going out into the wilderness. And the word of God is all that you're traveling on. Is that it's going to take you out of Egypt. It's going to take you through the wilderness. But it's going to take you into the promised land. And all the hardships you face, whether it's the Red Sea or wars that have to be fought or whether it's a shortage of water or food or whatever you, you, you perceive your problem to be. I remind you on the side that God always met their need, no matter what that need seemed to be. But even in the midst of the wilderness, what carried them forward was the promise that they had a land waiting for them, a land flowing with milk and honey. So you have heard the word of God. I don't know what that word to you may have been. That word may have been for you to hold on because he's going to deliver you in your marriage. It may have been hold on because he's going to bring that child back, that wayward child back from the street. Maybe it was for you to hold on because the situation you're in right now is just bleak. Your job, your work, your future just doesn't doesn't look good, but God has given you a word to say, hold on. Now on the bigger picture, the word for us is this, that on that one day, the trump of God is gonna sound and the dead in Christ will rise. And we who are alive and remain shall be caught up will be with him forever, to join him forever. See, that's the word of the Lord to us. That's the word that causes you and I as believers to tell everybody we can about the love of Jesus. And that's the word to you if you're a non-believer that it's time to get right because the Lord is coming back. So now we have this word in the bright light of today, but then we travel a little while. We run into some trouble and that's when doubt comes. Come on, let's walk a little bit more and look at a little bit more of God's beautiful creation and we'll talk about trusting God as we walk through the word. Come on. As we're walking, it looks like we've come to a dead end. Well, that happens to make my point for me. In Numbers chapter 32, the nation of Israel have been traveling now. They've spent the 40, last 40 years wandering in the wilderness. And now they've come to the edge, the border of the promised land. Both Aaron and Miriam have died. God has told Moses that he's going to die as soon as he gets his last transition done. And, and so Moses is now talking to the nation and they're getting ready to go into the promised land. And then three tribes, Reuben, Gad, and the half-tribe of Manasseh, the half-tribe of Joseph, Manasseh, they come to Moses with this great idea that we're on this side of the Jordan, mindful, not in the promised land, and they decide they want to stay there. Well, their dead end didn't look quite as bad as this one. I mean, you couldn't raise sheep back here. But what they saw was that where they were, 
the plains were, were, were bountiful with grass. They had water. They had cities that had already been conquered, and so they could just move right in. So they had all the things they thought it would need. They had places where they could put their wives, their children. They would be safe. They could put wall cities around them. And they had all the things they thought they needed to be safe and secure. I mean, it promised everything. It had everything but one vital thing. And that is, it wasn't the word of God. See, back in Exodus, 40 plus years ago, God had told them he was going to take them out of Egypt and into the promised land, not to the border of the promised land, not where they can look at the promised land, but into the promised land to an inheritance that he had set apart for them over 400 years prior. And yet here they come to their dead end and they liked what they saw. See, this is where you and I get in trouble. God gives us a word, gives us a promise. And then here comes Satan and he offers us an alternative. And we are guilty of the stereotype. We think Satan comes with a pitchfork and tail and, and horns. And so we're looking for the big boogeyman. But Satan often comes dressed up looking very pretty. In this case, the offer came up with fertile soil rolling hills and fresh water running through the plains, cities already built that the children of those three tribes could move right into. There's another word in Proverbs, I think it's 14, where the word says to us, there is a way that seems right to a man, but the end thereof is death. And this is what the problem was. The children of Israel, these three tribes came to Moses and to Eleazar with a compromise. What they saw, they liked. And they said this, imagine, imagine you saying this to God. I got a better plan. I see a better route. My idea fits me better than your idea. That's what they said. They said, I know you want us to go over into the promised land, but where we are right now, I can't imagine anything being any better. So they told God, keep your offer. Appreciate you, but the answer is no. As Moses talked to them, he told them, he says, guys, don't do this. Don't do this evil thing. And they assured him, oh, no, no, we're going to do our part. And Moses told them, I think it was in verse 23 of Numbers, he said, be sure your sin will find you out. Be sure. Be sure your sin will find you out. So when we come to the place of trusting God and holding on to his word or not, I encourage you to trust the word of God. See, Jesus said of himself in the Gospel of John, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. That's the promise of God. There's one way to salvation. That's in trusting Jesus. His blood poured out for your sins. All you have to do is ask him to forgive you. See, that's the word of God. Now, Satan comes and he offers you an alternative. Do this, do that, be this, be that, give this, give that, take this, take that. And we have all these alternatives presented to us and it's just another lie. And I say to you, like Moses said to Reuben, Gad, and Manasseh, be sure your sin will find you out. Well, long story short, in fact, 150 years long, the descendants of those three tribes after having compromised, after having not kept their word, after having not gone into the promised land and become part of the nation as they were designed to be, they found themselves falling into apostasy. The first three tribes of the nation of Israel to be overcome and to fall. I mean, it just makes sense when you think about it. If you're going to attack someone, why not attack the ones on the fringe? And when Satan can get you out on the fringe of obeying God's word, you are an easy target. Remember the word of God, the enemy. He's like a lion seeking whom he may devour. He's looking at you, trying to find a way to take you down. And if you're not standing firm on the rock of God's promises and word, you got nothing. You're just like Reuben, Gad and Manasseh. It's just a matter of time before you get taken out at the knee. So come on, hold on to God's unchanging hand and let's walk through the word together. Come on.
So we've been walking out here on the river and just thinking about what does it mean to hold fast to God's Word. I go back to what that teacher told me so many years ago. Don't doubt in the dark what God told you in the light. I know that there are times when it seems like the last thing in the world that could possibly happen is for the Word of God to come true. But God is not a man. He cannot lie. He cannot fail. And He doesn't forget. You can trust Him. I know I have. So as we continue to walk in the Word, let me continue to remind you that God is totally trustworthy. Also, I can remind you to like and subscribe. That way, these messages will come to you regularly and you can help me get the Word of God out to all those others who are walking in the wilderness of this life. So until then, remember, hold on to God's unchanging hand. If you have a message you'd like to send me, you can put it in the comments below or you can reach me at walkthroughtheword at gmail.com. That way, me and my team can pray for you. We'll lift you up before the Lord, lift your needs up and ask Him to bless you. One thing I know in walking through this wilderness we call life is that God hears and God answers prayers. So until next time, continue to walk in the Word. Bye-bye.